Welcome back everybody, this is GTM coming back at you with another video tutorial. Uh, today's video tutorial, we're basically going to be covering how to create a simple rig on simple inanimatable object type of characters. Something where you might want just a little bounce, st uh, stretch and squatch type of stuff. Characters without no arms or legs. Something similar to like these, uh, these scrubbing bubbles here, you know. Obviously there's not much to the rig here, it's just a bunch of eyes and maybe some morph targets, which we'll cover later on. Uh, in another video tutorial, the morph targets. But right now, I just want to show you how you can, we can use uh, certain splines as helpers to uh, help control the character, and then cover uh, you know link constraints for the eyes. Um, so this should be a pretty good tutorial. All right, um, let's go ahead and uh, launch up uh, Max here. Now you can see here I have. Um, our spray can guy and after the the, uh, the lesson plan on how to cut in eyes and mouse um, in the last video hopefully uh, you'll be able to work with uh, some of your characters and simply use that technique to cut in simple eyes and stuff anyways um you can download this file from the YouTube video there should be a link there obviously there is a link there sorry um, but you probably won't have the textures. I just grabbed some simple eye textures and threw them on here. So if you would like, if you hit F4, just to represent what the eyes would be, you uh, feel free to uh, basically, um, I just converted that to a, um, a poly. Feel free to like maybe delete that vertex in the center so you can have a hole that would represent where he's looking. Feel free to do that. If not, um, you know, if you understand how to do a little bit of texture, feel free to throw some eyes. Otherwise, it's not a big deal. Alright, so, as you can see here, I have him in turbo smooth. Ice line displays. Like I said, uh, never collapse your uh, turbo smooth with ice lines on. Just turn off your um, light bulb there. Alright. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go ahead and hide my ground plane here. Just hide that out the way. And click on my can and Z up on it. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, create a, a simple controller. I'm going to go to my top view, so I'm Alt W and out, maximize it out, and I'm in the top view. I'm going to go to my create and go right to uh, shapes here. I'm just going to use a circle, lay it on the ground, roughly bigger than the can. Now, of course, I could try to line this up, you know, and get it perfectly centered there, but I'm going to go ahead and just uh, click on the can, and then um, use my alignment tool right here, and I'll align it right to the can. XYZ position on the pivot it's fine and just apply it press ok another thing I'm going to do is I'm probably going to change the color of this just so you can see it better on the video I'm going to click it uh, make it red here I guess that's fine usually I make my splines green I don't know maybe you guys can see that pretty clear let's go green with that alright so now I'm going to take this spline and slightly just scale it up uniformly alright there we go so you can see we have a spline on the ground otherwise if it is higher that's fine uh, just kind of scoot it towards the bottom here and we can go ahead and rename this controller here otherwise the spline I'm gonna come right here to the modify and I'm gonna call this uh, the main control all right the next thing I'm gonna do is um, click on the spline I'm gonna hold down shift duplicate it up midway about right here make it a copy and I'm gonna scale that down a little bit like that let's go a little bit smaller and we're gonna call this one his turn control alright now from here I'm gonna go ahead and um, get a helper here pretty much like a dummy box here so I'm going to create tab and I'm in my front viewport, so I, I clicked on my front viewport, Alt W. And I'm going right here to my helper. So you have to go to Create, down here to Helpers. And I'm going to use this dummy box right here. And I'm going to align this dummy box right between his eyes. So the, the lines are right where the irises are. And I'm going to make sure this is kind of centered to it. Using those uh, edges right there as guidelines. Alright, so now I'm going to actually push that can back so I'm in perspective this dummy box not push the can but the box is a little too far so I'm gonna actually bring him closer and Z up on it so we kinda want him 
look in at the box there. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to create individual controls for each eye. And the only reason I'm showing you this way is because what if you create a character that needed his eyes to look two different directions? Somewhat like a chameleon or something. You know how they kind of look all weird and look different directions crazy? So in case you ever made a character that had eyes that needed to go different ways or, you know, maybe in your animation you had googly eyes and they just kind of went all over the place. So I'm going to go ahead and take another helper here, or shapes I should say, go to circle, back to my front viewport, I'm going to lay one right down to the center of the eye, about like that, and let's go ahead and change that color, so right now it's pink, uh, yours might be a different color, but I'm going to go ahead and change it green as well, just like that, and then I'm going to go ahead and select it, hold down shift, and duplicate it on this side, notice I'm aligning it perfectly with uh, the square here, so I'm going to go back to my perspective and let's grab those over here and push them slightly. I'm going to put them right inside the box. As you can see, we can easily grab the box and the two little circles. They're kind of like glasses or goggles. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and name these now. So I'm going to call, I'm going to click on the dummy box there and I'm going to name this the main eye control. This one right here would be his actually right side. So we're going to call this right eye control. And then of course this side I'm going to call the left eye control. All right. Now that I got both of them or everything named properly, you can see I got the main control, turn control, main eye control and the left and you know left and right eye control here alright so we're gonna start linking this up now so I'm gonna go ahead and um, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take uh, these eyes right here you can see that they're not attached to the head so if we were to grab the can he doesn't move with it so I'm actually gonna grab this eye and hold control grab this eye go to my link tool over here select it and I'm gonna just click from the eyes and drag it to the can. All right, and let go. So what happens there now is if I grab this can and move the eyes go with it. But I don't want to animate my character by selecting the can. I'm going to, you know, be using these main controllers here. All right, so let's just double check that, and make sure our can can actually move and the eyes go with it. All right, the next step I'm going to do is actually take the can here. I'm going to link it to this turn control. So now you can see we can grab this and it actually moves the can and the eyes. But what I want to use this for is to actually rotate and turn the can. All right, and before I get down to this one, we're going to start linking up his eyes. So I'm going to start off with the first one here. I'm going to click this eye right here. This is the right eye. I'm going to go to animations, constraint, look at constraint. I'm going to click this and I want this to look at the right circle or the right eye control right here. So when I go right over it, click it, you're going to notice the eye is going to kind of wig out on you. Kind of looks like uh, from Dr. Frankenstein, Gene Wilder, or I don't know who that was. But the eye is going to kind of freak out over here. So we're going to move over. We're in the motion tab. Let's scroll down all the way and you're going to see keep initial offset. I'm going to check that. The minute I do that, the eye is connected. So now if I grab this control and move it around, you can see the eye will follow that. Alright, so now I'm going to do the other eye. I'm going to go right over here to the left eye. Same thing. Animation, constraint, look at constraint. And I'm going to look at this one now. The left eye control. I'm going to click it and then I have to do the same thing. Keep initial offset. Now you can see that this circle controls this side. Now what I want to do basically is take both of these circles here and then link it to the dummy box right here. So once I do that now, 
I'm able to grab this dummy box and move them and both the eyes will actually move with the box. Now be careful, this, I did a quick texture job on the eye so you can see there's, you know, he's got a texture on the back side. So I'm just going to make sure I keep the movement to a minimum here. Alright, so there you go. Those are some, those are basically link constraints. We can actually, you know, get this uh, character to follow this dummy box when we animate. Alright, now here's the problem now. I got to get this main controller to move everything. So I'm going to take the dummy box here, link it to the turn control. So now if I grab the turn control, everything goes with it. But now I'm going to take the turn control here and then link it to the main control. There. So now when I grab this, this will actually move everything. At the same time, I'll use this as my turn control. At the same time, I can animate this to look around. And like I said, not that I'm going to use these guys, but in case you ever wanted to, you know, be able to con control the eyes both separately. So now we can actually auto key any of this. So like if I were to uh, turn on my auto key, key the first movement, you can see I, I can move them up. Maybe he slightly turns, so I'm going to key that. And then as he moves, slightly turns. But at the same time, I might key that dummy box and then just kind of have them maybe look a different direction here. So there you go. So as you can see, we can um, control that with these basic controllers here. Also, this is the time where you might want to add other modifiers to the character. For example, um, if I want to get a bend modifier on him, Make sure you select both the eyes in the can and throw the bend modifier. That way you can see, I'm going to turn off my edges here. That was F4 by the way. You can see I can bend the character with it and obviously the direction. Also I can go to the gizmo of the can, reposition it. Maybe I want to kind of stationary there or more flat on the ground go back to my bends and you can see that we can kind of move them around and of course in an earlier tutorial I showed you how to um, basically uh, you know if you want to use flex modifiers on there you know all we have to do is uh, make sure that you know you throw an edit mesh but I usually like to put my bends and my turbo smooths on top so if I were to put flexes on him, you know, obviously I would come here and select what portion I need to add a little flex to, throw the flex modifier on it, and I explained what the flex was in the last tutorial, one of the last tutorials. This will allow, you know, secondary movement, see how it kind of like bobbles around, flexes. And then if I wanted to add a bend modifier, I would throw another edit mesh on top of the stack then throw the bend and make sure I selected you know basically all the eyes and the body through the bend on there so now I can um, basically control it and then I would throw my turbo smooth on top for the final render I'll go about two or maybe three ice lines and there you go you can see that here I'm gonna change my edge colors here on the eyes so everything's all black and then you can see we can uh, animate them around a little bit. There we go. So that's kind of like on the lines of maybe some of the scrubbing bubbles. I mean, everybody kind of rigs a little bit different. But like I said, you just got to know your character and your character's limitations. As you can see, we can go back down the stack and still, you know, control what we need to. Vice versa. You can see as we get the turbo smooth, it gets heavier. That's why I usually just kind of turn it off and then, you know, animate it maybe in low form and then when I'm ready to render out I just turn them on. Alright so hopefully this helps a little bit on how to do link constraints or you know look at constraints basically so just remember it is from animation 
on the animation here, constraint, look at constraint. And don't forget about the initial offset. All right, so hopefully that helps. Uh, um, you know, feel free to uh, check out planetgtm.com. And if you have any renders of characters you've made, feel free to uh, send me an image, a rendered image, and I'll put it in the gallery if it, you know, obviously if it looks pretty good. Um, all right, until next time. The next uh, video tutorial I'm going to be covering is uh, basically facial morph, so we can give this character, you know, different kind of looks. You know, maybe mouth closed, gritting teeth, left eye blink, right eye blink, and so forth. All right, thanks for watching.